Now, I'm going to share with some, you something I've never shared in a conference. It's a personal testimony. And it might cause many of you to be very disappointed in me, even not even hear anything I have to say. So be it. I preach in a lot of places once. As a young man in the ministry, I was privileged of being around a lot of very, very old, and very, very godly men. And they would talk to me. Now, these weren't, these were men of God. Baptist, very staunch, reformed, some of them. People not given to enthusiasm or emotions or any other thing like that. Sound men. But they would talk to me about the power of God. They would talk to me about the presence of God. Not as men quoting stories that they had read, but men who themselves had seen with their own eyes the working of God. And I would go out on the streets in Austin, Texas and preach. I was afraid. There was no boldness. There was no power. There was nothing. But I would always hear the voices of these old men. And one day I decided enough is enough. I will seek him until I find him or until I die. I went into a closet and I said, I'll not leave this closet until I know God. Fifteen minutes later, I fell asleep. My roommates came home and found me in the closet. So I took an alarm clock with me. And please, I'm not saying this for any other reason except I feel like I'm supposed to. I took an alarm clock with me. Set it for every 15 minutes. I'd pray for maybe five or ten minutes, fall asleep. Alarm clock go off, set it again. This was my prayer. I didn't pray for China. I didn't pray for the presence of God. I didn't, I, uh, in the sense of my ministry, I asked one thing. Lord, you said if I seek you, I'll find you. You said, you said it, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to me. You would let yourself be found by me if I seek you. Night after night after night after night for months, two and three hours a night, simply sitting there like this, on my knees, Lord, it's been four months now, it's been five days now, and you still have not come and just sit there. Lord, I've been here three hours and you have not come. Day after day and night after night. And then one day our church was spring break and all the college students were going to go on a Bible study ski trip type thing in Colorado. And and I felt like the Lord wanted me just to go out into West Texas to the hill country, pretty barren. And I walked on top of those hills for three days like a wild man. If you would have seen me, you would have thrown me in an asylum. I was picking up rocks and I was throwing them, literally, physically throwing them at the sky. I was screaming. I was saying, God, I must know you. You must come. You must. I can't live like this anymore. I can't live just reading books. I can't live just reading about revivals and about people who knew somebody, who knew somebody, who knew somebody, who knew you. And nothing happened. I went home. Another several weeks passed. And one night, he came. He came. I just said, oh, Father, I can't. Please come. And he came. I was thrown down on the ground, I don't know how long, in a fetal position, covering my head, thinking, God's come to kill me. The presence of God, in a way, that in one second, more of my sin and my need and His glory and power was revealed. And then all of a sudden, every bit of fear was taken away. And I was filled with such joy, and my mouth shot open. Now don't be afraid. Verse after verse from Psalms and from everywhere else. Passages I had read just started coming forth. Praises unto Him, the Word of God. Such joy. And I can tell you, it has been 20 years. The presence of Christ is more real to me in this room than any one of you. And one of the things that is so bad today is many of you men here, you also have known the presence of Christ. But now most of your prayer life is nothing but praying just a little and then just realizing he hasn't come and getting up and walking away instead of staying there until he does. It's just prayer of going through the motions. You want holiness in your life? Run to him. And stay there, stay there. My little boy, whenever I'm putting my shoes on and he, he realizes my bags are packed, he goes, Daddy, stay with Ian? Daddy, stay with Ian? Or Ian, go with Daddy? I find myself, even this morning in prayer, going, Father, stay with Paul. Father, stay with Paul. Or, Paul, go with Father. I see so many boys today 
in the pulpit. They're boys. It's as those old men told me, the mark of a man of God is God upon the man. And I don't, I don't want to sound, I just want, I don't want to sound arrogant. I don't want to sound anything else. I just want to say this. That we have the desperate need to be men marked by the presence of God. We have a desperate need.